This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is the Ramble, and I'm Alex, and we'll be here until midnight tonight from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, we always love to talk to Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Um, It's your favorite time of year out here. What do you mean, favorite time of year? Yeah, it's when the uh, it's the weekend when they have the Blue Angels fly about oh, ten feet over your house. <laughs> Jesus, I hated that. Oh my God, and and it was scary too. You know, they like what they do. The Blue Angels. This is really this is the dumbest thing of all, right? Yeah. The Blue Angels announce that they're going to have a show on Sunday. All right. Where they fly over the city and they like strafe buildings and they come too close to buildings and and all of that and I'm surprised none of them have ever crashed. It uh, could happen one day. I it think. could happen. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 certainly not safe. But anyway, so um, uh, they they like strafe the buildings and everything. But the stupid thing is, on Saturday they say we're having a rehearsal. No, the rehearsals are like Thursday, Friday, then the shows are Saturday and okay, Sunday. Okay, Thursday and Friday. Okay, I forgot what day it was. But the, yeah. anyways, beforehand, they say we're doing a rehearsal. Now, I wonder, what happens on the rehearsals? We're not supposed to look? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you do a rehearsal for something that noisy, that invading, you know? So, invasive. Yeah, literally, sometimes it literally feels like the roof is peeling off your building. Mm-hmm. They're that close. It's so. absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, and I hated them. And so I every year, what I used to go on the air and just rail against them. Just say how horrible it was, you know. I mean, I don't see where this is a patriotic uh, uh, function, okay, you know. And I so I I was the guy who didn't like the uh, the, uh, uh, the the Blue Angels, and I wanted to have the city pass a law that they couldn't fly over city space. I mean, aren't you? You're not allowed to fly that close over sit over city, are you? Oh no, no. There's strict rules on that. Yeah. yeah, but they could do it once a year, and they were like they were like going they were within inches of buildings. You know? And it's the it, it's so amazing because this is probably the most anti-military city in the country, and the, everyone here loves it. <laughs> yes, because I used to get hell for saying, "Let's make them illegal. Let's let's not let them fly any longer." Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I'm going, you know, I, I'm sorry, I, I I don't see this as a great idea. You know, well, let them do it over Stockton or some shithole. That doesn't matter if they blow it up. You know. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so, so they, are they? they are they rehearsing today or tomorrow? They will start, I think, tomorrow or Thursday. Yeah, yeah they'll start the rehearsals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, God. And, and the worst part was, I I did a morning show, so I had to get up like at five o'clock. Okay, which is not normal for me. So I would. Uh, I would come home, and at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, precisely, I would put my head on the pillow and sleep for two hours. So I didn't have to go to bed really early at night, okay? Uh, And so I would try to get my nap. But then these things started flying overhead. They started about 1 o'clock in the afternoon with their damn Uh rehearsal. And I'm, I'm, and it was just, it was annoying. It was vexing. I couldn't sleep. I mean, it was terrible. <laughs> now, and and this was when I was much younger than I am now. So if I'm an old fart now, boy, I was an old fart then too. Yeah. Well, I know some people that actually leave town for the weekend because of the noise, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's very, uh, uh, I guess apparently if you got a pet, they get totally freaked out. So. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so what else is new? That's uh, pretty much it. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for talking to us, Larry, and okay. we'll, we'll see you next week. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very bad at starting up conversation lately. I'm, like, tired all the time, and, you know. I think it's it's medication I'm taking. I've decided entirely that that's what it is, and, and but I need to take the medication, so, you know, what the hell. So, uh, but uh, how, how how's your health? What's happening? You were supposed to get a hernia operation, and then that didn't happen. And then wasn't there something else you were supposed to do? Are you there? Did we lose him? Did he disappear on us? He certainly did. Wow! Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll call him again, and we'll. Uh... Oh. You lost me. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. You know, but anyway. So. Uh, no, what I'm saying is, so what else is new? I mean, uh, weren't you supposed you supposed to get a hernia operation, and there was one other thing you were supposed to? Oh yeah, you're. Oh, so the hernia is now scheduled for uh, election day. Uh, ironically, so. Oh, okay. Well, I'm about a month away from that. Yeah, you'll send your ballot in ahead of time. What is the? Well, I've, what is, I've canceled the surgery twice before. <laughs> what, what is the? What is the recovery on a hernia? I keep. I see things from oh, two weeks to two months. So really, they're very vague about it. Yeah, you can't. Uh, Somebody said you could increase your physical activity uh, after one week, go 25% a week, and then 50% the next week, and 75%. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, you know, is it, is it bothersome to you? Uh, it was very painful yesterday, yeah. Yeah, you see, I don't. I haven't had that problem. It was a little painful for a while, and then that stopped. And then I got that uh, that uh, uh, CT scan when they did my whole body and stuff, and they saw it, and they, they made a, uh, they remarked that it was uh, it, there was a, a hernia there, but it wasn't impacted or anything. So uh, yeah, so you're unless it's causing you pain, it, don't worry about it. Well, unless you want to, here's what you do: you don't want to go through the pain of something unless. Uh, uh, the uh, pain of an operation unless the pain you have to relieve it is worse than the pain you're going to have relieving it. Exactly, yes. So uh, we always wait for things to get as bad as possible and then we do something about them. Does this right. does this impede your, your uh, daily activities at all? Uh, no, just sometimes it does get very painful. It's uh, but say, as long as you can pop it back in, you're in good shape. <laughs> so you can pop it back in, right? Yeah. 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 Do you? Do you? Uh, does it hurt when you run? Uh, yeah, I, th I ran yesterday. And it did hurt. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, I guess you got to get it taken care of. It. And then there's the eyes, which you were supposed to get done. The uh, yeah, cataract which I canceled again. So, uh, so they canceled it, right? They canceled it, and I canceled it before. So. Well, I guess we're I, even. That's I get that right. done. You know, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's simple. People yeah. tell me that it's so easy. Yeah, you know, the, the actual surgery said it takes like 10 minutes. Yeah, and it's it's not, you know, you you can't feel anything because they deaden your eye. With, with which drops. I can't believe they can numb your eyeball. It was so weird Wait, to me. You know, the first time I ever had my, my eyeball numbed, you'll have to excuse me. I think I've lost the sense of the English language today. Um the thing about the first time I ever had my eyeballs deadened was I had a bad case of, um, uh, what is it, the conjunctivitis. I mean, really Ooh. just just lethal conjunctivitis. And so I finally went to an eye doctor, and he uh, he put, they what they do is they burn it out with uh, nitric acid or something. I can't remember what they use. But uh, they before they burn it out, they deaden your eye. So I didn't feel anything. I felt like little bubbles, and that was about it. And that was the first time I ever had it deadened. So when they said, we're going to deaden your eye in order to do this, I knew that I wasn't <laughs> going to feel anything. You know, it, it, It's amazing. It's, it's, and it used to be that that operation was a major operation. You know. When you would oh, go yeah, and I think you had to sleep, like, sleep with your head between sandbags. You couldn't move. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. 
and uh, now it's like, go home, wear the cup on your eye. You know, there's like a plastic cup. And then you go in the next day to see your doctor. He takes the cup off. He looks at your eye and gives you his blessing and says, keep using the drops till you run out. Yeah. So, so that's one of the few things that actually did get better in this dystopian world. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, well, I mean, there were several things that are better. I mean, you know, my... I'd probably be dead by now if it weren't for modern science and, you know, so on, because I had that prostate cancer. And they do the seeds, and they do the radiation, and they do the fast radiation, and they do all that stuff, okay? And it works, you know? Uh, and uh, uh, you get c cured of your particular ailment, as it were. Yeah, you didn't go the, you didn't go the way of William Hurt, so... What happened with William Hurt? I forgot. He died. He, yeah. he died of prostate cancer last year, yeah. Yeah, I, well... I Which can, seems you don't hear that happen very often. Anymore. Well, you do. I'll tell you what when you do, is that people get prostate cancer in their uh, 50s and 60s, their chances of dying from it are higher than if you get it when I got it. Because when I got it, it's just a natural thing. If you live long enough, you're probably going to get prostate cancer. So I did, and they took care of it, and that was it. You know, no big deal. You know, so I mean, uh, hopefully, hear that? I'm knocking on alleged wood. There it is. Knocking on uh, laminate. Well, it's a laminated wood. So if I knock on wood on the lamination part of it, does that still count as knocking on wood because the wood is below the lamination? <laughs> It throws it into questions. People, so, uh, people, be sure to write me and give me the answer to that question. You know, because underneath it's wood. So, there we go. So, the only other person I know that uh, died of prostate cancer, celebrity-wise, I think was Frank Zappa. Well, uh, there are a lot of people that die of prostate cancer. It's, it's not like you don't die of prostate cancer. Okay. Um, but it, it's it's... It's much more solvable in older people. When you're in your 50s and 60s, eh, you know, it, it could be a little aggressive at, at, at that early on. So, But in any event, I mean, I went through it. They took care of it. And uh, so far, I've been pronounced uh, free and clear. So, you know, well, just wait and see. I, you know, I hope it stays that way. I think you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could be like you don't want to be like Steve McQueen and die at fifty. So. Well, you know, my, my biggest problem is as you get older, if folks. I know this isn't good broadcasting because we're always talking about our health, especially and death. And <laughs> death. Uh, but the fact is that that I uh, uh, my biggest problem is the medicine they give me for stuff. You know, and I take the stuff for my neuropathy, and it. It knocks me out. It just really knocks me out. And I stopped taking it. Like last night, I didn't take it. Okay. And uh, today, I'm kind of suffering for not having taken it. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, and last night, I had a harder time sleeping because it works as a good sleeping pill. So, all those things concerned, considered. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's stuff like that. There are other pills, too, that you take. I found out that my, uh, I think my thing that helps with cholesterol, uh, statin, uh, should be taken at night because it makes you drowsy. I didn't know that, you know, and I've been taking it during the day and wondering why I was drowsy. Oh, and then I take, I take a thing. Cholesterol I, forms at night, too. That's probably why. Yeah, then I have what I call my pee pill. Uh, which is uh, tamulosin, and that makes you really groggy. So I didn't take that last night either. So because I didn't take those drugs, I didn't get a restful sleep last night. So guess what? I'm groggy anyway. So <laughs> it's, you know, I, I, and it's all this medicine and everything like that. I mean, come on. Isn't science good enough that we can take care of this in other ways now? You know, you would think, yeah, like, yeah. uh, well, I think about a last miracle drug was maybe penicillin was a miracle drug when it came. Out. Oh, absolute miracle drug. 
Uh, and it just worked like that, bang. Yeah, and it, it, it people were, you know, in the old days, if you got an infection, chances are you were going to die of an infection. But then penicillin came along. Boom, 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 takes care of it, easy peasy. Then when antibiotics came along, that improved on penicillin because some people were allergic to penicillin. Uh, and so they give you antibiotics, you know, knocks everything out. Everything's just fine. Simple. But now you don't now they just try to get things that you have to take for the rest of your life so they can make more money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, this stuff, this uh, pregabalin I take for the neuropathy that makes me loopy, uh, I probably would have to take take it for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm going to be loopy for the rest of my life, you know. And I, it also makes throws off my balance. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sometimes almost fall on the floor. You know, it's Jesus. it's it's ridiculous. You know, but I mean, you know, the old. Uh, I love constantly saying the old Betty Davis line, getting old ain't for sissies. <laughs> yeah, and it's true. It's true. It's just, you know, I mean, I, I think about, gee, what if I live to be 100? You know, I don't want to die, so I'd like to live to be 100. But if I have to live to be 100 and I'm bumping into walls and everything, I don't know if I want that. You know? No. You know, so... So. so I look at I look at celebrities that die younger than I am, and uh, that's, that's my latest quest. I, like I told you, Steve McQueen died. At, I can't believe he died at fifty. That seems just impossible. Was it was it fifty? Yeah. Yeah, and then he got something where he was looking for a cure for it, and he was. He went down to Mexico. He had some. There was a tumor in his uh, around his stomach that was like seventy pounds. Yeah, but I bet they could take care of that today. Today, probably, yeah. You know, I use as a perfect example my father. My father died of a pituitary tumor. Now, people don't know where the pituitary is. It's in a very hard to get to place. It's if you put a, if you put a, your finger in the center of your forehead and then the center of your top of your head, where they intersect is where the pituitary is. And it was Im almost impossible to operate on, you know, without making you. I don't know, lose memories of your prom or whatever, you know. So <laughs> my father got it, and they didn't know what to do. They hacked his face up like crazy. I remember that, trying to get to it and whatever. They couldn't. He died of a pituitary tumor. And I have told the story before. A couple of years later, I'm going out with this woman, and I said, you know, we're having a nice time and everything. And she says, you know, I almost died a few years ago. And I said, well, really? Why? How? I had a pituitary tumor. I said, oh, my God, my father died of a pituitary tumor. She said, well, they can operate on it now. And what they do is they go up through the roof of your mouth to get to it. And it's a very simple operation. And they, nobody dies of pituitary tumors anymore. But my, wow. fa but my father did. And if it had just been a couple of years later, he'd be alive. He, would have, well, he wouldn't be alive today, but he would have lived a lot longer. How old was he when he died? 59. That's too young. So I figure I'm really living on borrowed time. Of course, my mother lived to be 100. My mother lived to be 100, right? <laughs> so mean average there, I don't know. <laughs> mean, well, let's see, it'd be one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, I mean, so it's things like that where we've made incredible advances, things that we it were a certain death sentence in the old days, now is like, you know, Easy peasy, we take care of it, you know. And then there are other things that we just never have managed to solve. I mean, everybody goes, well, we've never cured cancer. Well, which cancer? You know, there's so many forms of cancer and things that fall under the cancer category that you can't just have one thing that cures all cancers. So you have to go cancer by cancer. Yeah, and I've I've noticed since I was a kid, every year there'll be so, you'll hear in the news of some university come up with something. We think we've got the cure for all cancers, and then you never hear about it again. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it, but I mean there, there, I mean there are certain things that help solve cancer. I mean, like I had radiation. You know, that's the the main way they take care of prostate cancer is radiation. Uh, 
Yeah, what they've done is they've, they've extended people's lives with cancer, but a lot of cancers still wind up killing you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are certain cancers you get them, you know, like, uh, uh, what do you call it? pancreatic cancer. Yeah, that'll kill you pretty quickly. They, they tell you, go home, get your affairs in order. We can't operate on it. Now, my ex-wife, Ronnie, had pancreatic cancer, and they operated on her. They did a thing called the Whipple Procedure. And it, it's only done on about 10% of people who have pancreatic cancer, but if you qualify for it, they'll do it. But I remember with her, the rehabilitation from it took forever. I mean, they just they gutted her like a car. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Now, one day, they will come out with a uh, you know, the, the trouble is with pancreatic cancer. Is this a fun discussion, folks? Are you enjoying this? <laughs> the, the, the terrible thing about pancreatic cancer is that by the time you it, find it and see it, that it's happening, it's too late. Yeah, you don't show symptoms until it's too late. Until it's too late. And they're starting to come out with some kind of tests that are precognitive. And can do it, bef you know, figure it out before you get it, you know. And then maybe, then they can do something about it, you know. So, whatever. So, uh, uh, so what, so your diseases so far are a cataract and a hernia. That's about yeah, it, huh? Yeah, Yeah, see, you've got, you've really basically got nothing going for you. Nothing. It, well, what happens is it's it's things that happen when your body starts falling apart, you know. And the and you're a runner. You run three times a week, right? Three, four, yeah, every other three, day. Three, four. Been doing it for how many years? And since '88. Yeah. And the question is, is that going to prevent you from getting something that's deadly? No. You know, uh, I I like what. Uh, Bobby Slayton once said, he said, they say if you, if you, if you run every day, um, you will um, uh, live to be maybe, uh, uh, the average age will be 10 years more. He said, but you know what you're going to do with those 10 years? You'll be <laughs> running. <laughs> and it's true, you know. Why well, I, think I, I think I told you you liked that quote to Neil Armstrong, the first man on the mood, and said he didn't exercise because he thought we all had a finite number of heartbeats. So. Well, I, 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 my joke was uh, I don't work out because uh, I, I don't want my body to wear out. <laughs> you, you know, the more you exercise, the more you... Yeah. you know, like my, I want to keep it low mileage. My wife ran and she I don't know slam dunk I don't know what she did she did everything you could do that was she, she was very athletic she has everything wrong with her you can possibly have at least skeletally really? <laughs> oh yeah a bad back a bad this a bad that you know and I'm going oh gee all those years of running and everything that was really good for you wasn't it you know um but she, uh, you know, she, she uh, when it comes to being infirmed, I guess, she's more infirmed than I am. I just complain, you know. So. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, so you, you, people, well, I always watch the obituaries. Remember I used to read the obituaries on the, on the show? That was my favorite part of the show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I used to watch, read the obituaries, and the reason I did is it was more curiosity on my part as to, as to what age people were dying at, okay? Now, I was yeah. pretty young when I started doing that, but, you know, I come across somebody who died at 40, and I go, oh, God, you know, my days are numbered. Yeah, you still, I still go through the paper and I read obituaries, and you can all, even, well, now I'm old, but... Uh even when you're young, you can always find someone that died younger than you. Well, <laughs> well uh, Carl Reiner, before he died, said that every morning he read the obituaries, and if his name wasn't there, he made himself <laughs> coffee. <laughs> you know. Uh, Did he make a hundred? He was no, he's about ninety-five, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Hold on a second. I'll ask the expert. Echo. How old was Carl Reiner when he died? Carl Reiner died at 98 years old on June 29, 2008. 
Spring Twenty in Beverly Hills, California. Okay. All right. There we go. That's a quick answer. Yeah, ninety-eight years. Well, uh, they, Norman, uh, Norman Lear is over a hundred. He just hit a hundred. Just hit a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Wealthy man. Wealthy man, but more than that, uh, you know, uh, very, he, he had a successful career. But anyway, listen, we've run out of time here. So, yes, we so, have. So, well, just let's. So I'm air just, time. Let's hope. I'm just going to dump you. <laughs> and we'll talk next week. How about that? You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. That's right. There's Larry, and we love having Larry. Don't we like having Larry on? Yes, we do. We love having Larry on. I just have him on every week because I'm too lazy to do a half hour by myself anymore. I used to, you know, I used to be able, if you told me nobody was going to call and I had to ad lib for four hours, I could do it. And I can't do that anymore. I just, it's, it's not in my uh, DNA any longer. It's, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I've been feeling a little bit better since I stopped taking those pills. I'm still a little woozy, you know, but it's, uh, it seems to be. I think right now what I'm facing is coming down off the pills uh, because they are, I understand, quite addictive. Um, and um, even though I wasn't taking a large amount of them, it was, it was, was uh, you know. So I'm trying not to take them. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I love them. They're, they're fine, but I just get woozy. I get, uh, I get loopy and all of that, and that's, that's not good. Well, anyway, it's time to talk to our uh, our uh, uh, our people here as they come on our program, and we form what's called a citizen panel. And uh, let me see here, who have we got? Uh, let me see. Uh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. We've got uh, first of all, Jeff. Put your face in the middle of the picture, okay? Oh yeah. Yeah. I can yeah, do that. yeah, yeah. You Thank always, you. Yeah, yeah. You always got to do that. And uh, let me see here. I say hello. To, what are you? You're in bed tonight, uh, Kevin. Uh oh. Yeah. Hear me? I mean, there isn't there isn't a reason why you're in bed, particularly outside of rest, maybe. No, I'm, I'm in a hotel in Arizona. Oh, I see. In in liberal Arizona. Oh, I, okay. What are you doing in Arizona? Uh, I'm here for uh, to check on my truck and uh, for a car show tomorrow. Now, is that truck the one that you won? No, the car is the one that I won. The truck is the one I'm rebuilding. Oh, I see. And so why why did you have to go to Arizona to rebuild the the truck? The truck is being rebuilt here, and the car is the one that was built here. And I'm here for the the youth programs having a car show tomorrow. So oh, I, I see. told my okay. out the car that they first built for the next car I that they're see. going. Yeah. So you're just doing supporting program hmm? <laughs> yeah well that's good that's good and he's sucking on a soda hello josh how are oh, it's you water how are good, you? How you doing? good to see you good to see you uh and uh, charlie wallace hey i found this humorous oh boy <laughs> you're fine and... charlie's got a bone to pick oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's worse than the pun he's got on his chest. <laughs> and, of course, uh, uh, Alan is here, uh, as usual. And uh, if you, uh, the rest of you want to call, you can call, too. You know, that would be nice. Yeah. So, hmm. anyway. Okay. So, anyway, uh, you know, I, I, I was thinking about this. Uh, you know, a guy like Herschel Walker. All right? Yes. How does he ever get to even run for something? I mean, I, I can't believe that people are as stupid or maybe stupider than he is. I mean, why would anybody vote for that sack of crap? It, it just boggles my mind. And the fact that I live in a country where anyone would even vote for Herschel Walker frightens me. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody has really voted for him yet, right? Have they? No, not yet. But it, no, the he, primary. He, he won the primary. Well, he won the primary, right. but that was with a bunch of Republicans. We know they're stupid. But you know what? You know what gets me? 
is the fact that you get all these Republicans out there and they're defending Herschel Walker. <laughs> a guy who, who, who speaks that he's for family values and yet he never saw any one of his four kids. In fact, when that kid did that video putting him down, he probably had to look at it and go, I don't know if I've ever seen him before. Of course not. You didn't see any of your kids. Yeah. You know? I mean, and then Republicans say that they're moral people, they're for family values. What are family values? You get four women pregnant Moron. by you, 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 you pay one to get an abortion, and then when she gets pregnant again, you want to pay her again to go get an abortion. But she decided to have a kid, so now she's got a kid. But he doesn't know if, if it's for real. Well, of course not. He's never seen the kid. You know, I mean, if uh, let's say for a moment you're for family values, which I think is a bunch of crap, okay? But Because what are family values? If this is family values, then, uh, you know, I'm going to go b screw my brains out, you know? I mean, it's just, it's just amazing just amazing it drives me nuts when i see this happen and then all these republicans coming to their defense and uh, i saw this one clip of this woman she's i can't remember her name now but she's a female talk show host and she referred to the woman that he paid to get the abortion a skank dana loesch wasn't it D D dana loesch that's exactly yeah. who it was yeah did you see that clip i saw a clip yeah yeah she she called him, uh, he called her a skank. Uh, but Herschel's not a skank. No, he's not a skank at all. He's a good. He, he, well, he says, well, you know, I used to be a kind of a nice, not a nice guy, but I found my, I found God. Yeah. <laughs> how, how can these people find God the minute they're running for office? You know. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Here here comes Tony. It says, grab them by the prostate. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tony. You know, can I say one thing, Alex? I don't mean to jump right no, in. No, you can't say one thing. I'm sorry. I am. I watched that beginning of that documentary that you talked to me about. Just now, I had. A, I am so fucking disgusted already with Roosevelt. Did you see what he was trying to do? Stop them from having kids. The stupid people. Oh, I had to turn that fucking thing off. What about Roosevelt? I didn't. Roosevelt. I don't remember that anything about Roosevelt. Like. Which Roosevelt? Franklin. He was against stupid people, feeble-minded people, of having offspring. I never so heard about that. Franklin or Teddy. I forgot who it was. Alex, that I got a lot. Well, you, well, that's, 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 you're not very accurate there. If you don't know whether it was Teddy or whether it was Frank, it's one of those talking. assholes. I'm what, so what do you mean it's one of those you. assholes that was? Alex, you're right. That's it's good so far. But I was getting emotional. What, no, I, was, what? I, I didn't. Never, I never turned you on that's a documentary about sense. Roosevelt. Yeah, because you. Uh, it was one of, just the whole propaganda of what they were doing. Here. Was they he the Republican or the Democrat? This fucking country stinks, really. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. That's Tony, Tony, to begin with, you don't know what you're talking about because you admit you don't know what you're talking about. But no, in the beginning of the uh, Which episode. Which Roosevelt? To begin with. Oh, I got to look now again. What's it? Was it Bob Roosevelt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I, this, I, I was actually totally, I'm totally disgusted. Or was it watching. Sam Roosevelt? Whoever it is, I forgot. He's just an asshole from the word go out. No, it was probably Bobby. That sounds like Bobby Roosevelt. To Holy me. shit! What a bunch of assholes. Yeah, Bobby was Roosevelt going. was a piece of shit. Yeah. Mm. No, I mean, I I don't know. I, that sounds more like Teddy, to be honest. With I think it's Teddy. Yeah, I think so. I'm fucking jerk. That was guy. earlier in the century too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't know, <clears throat> we didn't know scientifically a lot about mental health and so on and so forth. And, and there may have been a belief that it was actually passed on genetically. Uh, he but looked like a dick. What? what do you mean, I'm dick? telling you, this country was uh, built uh, upon uh, assholes. Do really. you like our national? Do you like our national parks, Tony? Oh yeah, I created the parks. They were thinking about. I, I can't even get into it. What that. do you mean? He created the national park system. And he was a fucking pro-Nazi guy. Oh, yeah. What do you mean he was a pro-Nazi? There were no Nazis <clears throat> then. There weren't any Nazis back then. I'm telling you this. There were no right. I, I, Tony, I was Tony, getting wrong. I had to walk away. Tony, Tony, my before game, you so. start sounding like an absolute moron, I, I <laughs> yeah, kind of hedge your bets here. Okay? 
Yeah. Because, I mean... You know, uh, I watched the rest of it. It's like 160 There minutes. were no Nazis back then. <laughs> yeah. The Nazi party was invented by, by uh, Ben Hitler. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Alan. Uh, Tony, Tony, I know that probably in Queens, they smell, they spell prostate with an R. And yeah. Oh, did they spell it wrong? I they forgot. Spelled yeah. wrong, yeah. It's yeah, you get, I'll leave it up there oh, anyway. Oh, you've got a prostrate <laughs> problem. You have a trouble. Oh, you have a problem. You're always lying down. I see. <laughs> That's your prostrate. So problem. Phil gave you cancer. I yeah, can see yeah. that. Because <laughs> yeah, he always claims that he's giving everybody cancer. He's like the, yeah. was that, Typhoid Mary? <laughs> was that I never had prostate or? cancer until he got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was only because I hold him in such great respect, I try to yeah. be just like him. So yeah. I actually find him entertaining. I know it's crazy when these guys go on, I laugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. Okay. I think it's funny, though. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, how you doing tonight, Josh? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? Yeah, you never you sound like you're doing badly. You never come on and go, "Hey, life sucks." <laughs> nice. Well, it does on certain levels. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. But how uh, do we really live in that moronic a country where people find Herschel Walker a good idea? Well, I don't know about the country, but certain parts of it anyway. Now, I, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you something right now. now obviously, um, what do you call it? Uh, iTunes, or not iTunes, uh, uh, YouTube is not doing their job. Because I went on to YouTube tonight, and the first story was there was shocking. Uh, Michael J. Fox dies. Did he? What? No, I looked it up. I, there's nothing that he died, and yet they let this that thing go on. the first time that's happened. Yeah, but I mean, they should immediately catch it. They'll catch it if I play a song they don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. they, they go absolutely ballistic about something like that. So, so I don't get it. All right, yeah. that's true. Yeah, but anyway, um, depends if it makes them money or not. I guess. Yeah, but leaving that out there probably gets clicks or whatever. Well, and, yeah, uh, but I mean, it it yeah. shouldn't get clicks. It well, should be right. taken off. It's you know because I fake promote, news. I thought yeah. he was dead tonight. You know, and then I went online. I looked for Michael J. Fox dead, and I didn't find anything. <laughs> you know, Wikipedia. You go to Wikipedia, and you know, all you have to do is look at born, died, okay. And if they're not dead, it, <laughs> it, it, they don't have died. But I'll it's tell born, you this yeah. about Wikipedia: five seconds after somebody <laughs> dies. They put in die. Yeah. 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 You know, so I mean I and I looked at Wikipedia and it said he was still alive. It's gonna be a big shock to the Michael J. Fox family. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> anyway. Wonder who uh, put that on there, YouTube a video? Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, like the first was the first video I came upon this evening. I like and I I went, what? And I started watching it, and they weren't saying he was dead. They were just telling stories about him. Excuse me, I, I have to, for a second, I got to close the door over here. Uh, because if I don't, the old lady will get all pissy with me. So, mm -hmm. hey, you're making noise. You're waking me up. You know, so there we go. So, anyway, anybody have anything they want to talk about tonight? <coughs> Okay, mm -hmm. well, it's nice seeing you all, and we'll talk to you uh, next week. Uh, Did we talk about Biden get pardoning all the people for the marijuana possession? I, I think we talked about that last night, but it's worth last talking night. about. It. It's worth talking about again. Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing is that who was one of the biggest people against the legalization of marijuana? Against? Yeah, against the legalization. Mm -hmm. For years. Massachusetts, probably. No. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, I, 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 you know, we could say, oh, well, he's hypocritical, but that's not the case necessarily. People do Flip change. Flopper. People, no, people change mind, their minds. They have their, their minds changed. And uh, mm -hmm. I just think that uh, this has been a terrible thing for years, this illegalization of this drug, and that you oh. realize that it is more illegal marijuana right now federally 
than fentanyl? Probably. And fentanyl kills people. Mm-hmm. Marijuana no, they're both, doesn't. They're both Schedule One drugs. Yeah, but in the federal. Uh, what does federal. fentanyl do? What does that do for you? What? What oh, you want to try it? You want to try it? You know, it's like yeah. that try it. Like, see if you can John store some pills. Good. Take a couple of them, Tony. Yeah. Uh, I only took two milligrams of volume when I was walking the line. Anyway, yeah. it's not a Schedule One drug, Valentine. Just take one first. Yeah, they're, they're if you both, like it. But marijuana is a Schedule One drug, mm-hmm. like heroin is a Schedule One drug. I mean, we really? we haven't been dealing with drugs properly in this country for years. You know, I mean, my feeling is we should legalize every drug yeah. and let it be medicinally dispensed. Then you wouldn't have all these people dying. I mean, heroin is, does not kill people because it is, uh, it's dangerous, particularly. And please, people, listen to what I'm saying before you decide to go out and try heroin. But it's, <laughs> hi, it's a highly addictive substance, but you won't get addicted the first time you try it. It'll take you about six weeks of abuse to get addicted to it, all right? But it is not the drug, as horrible a drug, say, as fentanyl, because heroin only kills you because the stuff on the street is like made in a vat somewhere, and you don't know what the dosage is, and so on. If you had the government dispensing it, and you knew the amount of of heroin that was in a a, a vial or whatever, People wouldn't be dying. Pollution They're only the dying other. because it's illegal. Same with fentanyl. Same, same, well, fentanyl, yeah, but fentanyl in and of itself, you can do overdose on fentanyl, can't you, if you take too Well, many? you can with heroin, too. It's, fentanyl is, a, is just 10 times more strong. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, all I'm saying is most of the fentanyl you're going to get. The trouble with the fentanyl is they're, they're lacing. It's synthetic. It's synthetic. Well, they're also going out and lacing things like cocaine with the fentanyl, and then people are buying cocaine, doing and, the fentanyl, and doing heroin. No. And heroin they're, and, yeah, they're yeah. just over, they're over, over, uh, how do I say it? Overdosing it, basically. Well, basically. Right. Uh, they're putting too much of it in there. Well, there's, right. no, but there, what's the, there's no reason to put fentanyl in cocaine, okay? Correct. Except to maybe lessen the strength but, of the cocaine and try and up the fentanyl. They yeah. could take a, a, a pill full of flour and put too much fentanyl all, all on i'm it saying too. is the reason these drugs kill people is because they've been illegal and there and because is somebody doesn't know how to mix it right yeah there's no government That's oversight it. or manufacture Correct. of this stuff so so fentanyl is so toxic that if you got the powder on your hand it would soak through your skin and could kill you no. pure fentanyl no. Pure no. fentanyl, yeah, well, wait, wait, you, used in a medical. Wait, 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 wait. You're, sa- you're saying you're saying no, Charlie? Yeah, I heard that was uh, that was just police propaganda. No. No. It's well, what do you mean no? no? Where are you getting your information? Where are you getting your Talk- information from? Who are you talking to me? Yeah, of course. Oh, medical. I mean, uh, you know, medical, medical. But where? Where? Doctor Phil. I mean, he just said that it was the police. <laughs> Well, Spray. Kevin agreed with me. There's two against one. Yeah, yeah. if it's pure, if it's pure really? fentanyl, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll agree with Charlie. Now it's two against two. How's that? <laughs> yeah. We need to get a doctor to call the show. No, but all I'm saying is, is that by making these drugs illegal, we've made them dangerous. We've made them more dangerous than they are. You know. Um, sure, but that's with anything. If you use, if you've got heroin and you're you're not mixing it correctly, you're making it dangerous. Well, the trouble that's is right. that most heroin has other stuff mixed into it. That's Correct. The Just problem. like cocaine and everything else. Yeah. You know, cocaine used to be mixed with baby laxative, and you shit like shit like a shark, well, but you get high. Well, I used to I used to do that with it, too. so I so it'd be a little weaker, and so I wouldn't use as much. Anyway. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, that's what everybody did. I mean, they they, they mixed it with whatever. Yeah, but that is not aspirin, the, 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 whatever. But, but, but uh, baby laxative, uh, mannitol, yeah. I think it was called. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, would not kill you, you know. Right. Uh, but uh, but there was other people that would do what it, whatever yeah. was laying around. They would mix it with. Them. Yeah. Well, what happens and is that is, is that if the government legalized it and then. All the peop- all these drugs on the street had to be approved by the government uh, for strength and purity and so on and so forth. We would yeah, not have the deaths it. that we've had because of these drugs. Yeah, most likely not. Yeah, 
And if the government had been a little more on the on the on the, on the spot with this whole thing, and on the job with the fentanyl, uh, uh, oxycontin rather, we a lot of people wouldn't have died from it. Uh, but uh, they let this company. What was it? Was the name of it? Uh, uh, Purdue. Several of them. Well, Purdue was the main bad one, the bad person in that, bad actor in that uh, situation. Not in fentanyl, in, in, in narcotics. What? Like, uh, what? Like morphine and oxycodone and stuff. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what are you talking about, Alan? I'm talking about... I'm talking Purdue, about Purdue ox- didn't, put, didn't, didn't uh, put out fentanyl. They put out No, I didn't oxycodone. say they put out fentanyl. I said they put out oxycodone. You're not listening. No, I'm not. I'm researching to find out your... your if you have fentanyl in your hand, so is Charlie. He's got his hand yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I Google, can you be killed by skin contact with fentanyl? And it says no. And what? where are you okay. going for that? Biomed Central. Huh? It says no. Due to its extremely poor penetration of the skin barrier, symptoms of intoxication from skin exposure are unlikely. So let's try it. That let's, is bullshit put out by the police. Let's try it. Yeah, let's I try a different. Hear that. You're right, let's Charlie. Try a diff, right. Let's try a different site, Charlie. Here, I, I'm going by Mayo Clinic, and it says fentanyl patches, patches transdermal, right? Yeah. Okay. Fentanyl patches may cause serious or life-threatening problems, and it goes into the it, different. But, no, wait, but it said fentanyl patches. Okay. And but patches, right, wait a minute, wait, hold on a second. It's in your no, hand no, no, or it's on a patch. No, Either way, no, it's it could, no, it could be that the stuff in the patch is made to be able to penetrate the skin with the, with yeah, the, with the uh, substance, it. whereas just touching it is not going to have the same effect. Okay. Doctor. Uh, this is a stupid question. Can I ask one question? It yeah. depends on what, what form it's in. Yeah, listen to Kevin. You know, no, don't listen to me. Science magazine says. No, we we all have to listen. To, what? <laughs> what, 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 what? What? Say, Charlie. What? It's July fifteenth, twenty twenty-two. Science magazine oh. says fainting from fentanyl fentanyl exposure. Nope, does not happen. Hmm. And that's no. where again? This is according to science www.science.org. Okay. Yes, a, yes, Tony. Here's a stupid question. When they were saying, would it would it maybe change if you have like a cut on your skin where they where it can directly get in? And I can yeah. see that. Yeah, the skin's broken. Yeah, that might that might be more of it. If your skin broke, then maybe it might get. Yeah, but I mean, we're not talking about that in general. Oh, you're just talking skin. He's on just skin saying if you it. touch it, you're gonna it's yeah. gonna kill you. You okay. used to see the 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 uh, the busts where. You know, the cops would go in there and they'd touch it, and all of a sudden they'd yeah. go, on, "Oh, I'm going to the hospital." But now you really? don't see that anymore. Yeah, well, and, and know, usually they're because they're wearing gloves. Well, yeah, yes and no. Yeah. Well, Alan, you were a cop. Did you ever get exposed to any of that? No, fentanyl oh, hadn't been around well, then. No. Wasn't around in the twenties. That's right. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I hate to think what you say about me, Kevin, when I'm not I had around. To get, I had to get you one, Alan. It, it's okay, no problem, pal. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, uh, you know, I mean, the way we've treated drugs in this country has been horrible. To begin with, the way we've treated drugs in this country is we've made drugs illegal to go after blacks and political leftists. Uh, the Nixon administration, John Ehrlichman said that... Um, Nixon had told him, "We got to make, we got to go after marijuana because that way we can get blacks and we can get uh, right left wingers off the street because the leftists are the ones that smoking pot and black people and the two of them, uh, if we get if we go out and start busting them, they're not a problem. And so they were using these drug laws over the years to go after especially blacks uh, and in other cases." Uh, people of artistic bent, let's say, who might just say, I'm going to smoke some pot. That looks like a good idea, you know? But if you were... Well, yeah, the police used to say that marijuana would make you psychotic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's roots and hell. Well, I mean, uh, there was this film that I helped uh, distribute uh, 
with uh, the people at Normal uh, called um, Reefer Madness, oh, yeah. in which they gave you an idea of what would happen if you smoked marijuana. And that was started, and that was kind of uh, forced into being by Harry J. Anslinger, this guy who was the first head of the Narcotics Enforcement Organization. And he got that job after he managed to prove, that if you look at the history of marijuana and you go and check out uh, the amount of newspaper articles about marijuana and how people jumped out of buildings from using marijuana and this from marijuana and that from marijuana, it was only over about a two year period when Harry J. Anslinger started uh, putting these uh, articles and forcing these articles into newspapers. And so all of a sudden the whole country was, you know, marijuana conscious. Before that, they didn't even care. You know, marijuana has been around forever, okay? It's a naturally occurring plant in nature. Um, but they used it uh, to, uh, to, to scare people. And they started putting all these articles in the, in the magazines and newspapers, and then they got the government to make it illegal. And who got the job to head it up? The guy who was, like, forcing this whole thing, this whole issue. And he remained as the head of the organization, I think, well into the 50s, when the United Nations made marijuana legal in every country in the world. And he was the head of that. He was the head of getting that out there. And it wasn't that he hated marijuana or that he thought it was dangerous. He just wanted a job. That's what a lowlife Harry J. Anslinger was. So anyway, that's, that's, that's the history of drugs in this country. So don't tell me that anything you can read online is either true or false about fentanyl because we don't know. We don't know whether it's just false information being fed to the public to go after a drug. No, make fentanyl legal. Make it, 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 make it available to people who want it in doses that will not kill them, okay, and keep drugs safe. And the way to keep drugs safe and to keep the public safe is to keep these drugs legal, or let's say decriminalized. I think that's probably a better way of putting it, you know. But let's not go around busting, you know, black people because they use a particular drug, you know. I, I live in Harlem. Heroin was a big thing up here in the in the thirties and forties. You know, so. Did you talk to people when it was when it was this big deal? Were you on the streets in the thirties and forties? Was that to try and make up for the joke that Kevin told me? <laughs> no, no, no. Kevin's joke was good. Yeah. Kevin's joke was good. I'm yeah. just trying yeah. to verify where you got your information. Well when I was hanging out at the cotton club. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. That was a little later, though. No, it wasn't. Cotton was Club it? was, uh, what, 20s, 40s? 30s? No. But it was huh? 30s or 40s, wasn't it? 30s, 30s 40s. That was a... a might, have been the 30, might have been the 20s. No, 40s. Hmm. 40s. After okay, the 40s. Kevin and I agree again. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Um, uh, Echo? Because we're doing, we're doing a show. When did... Show. Uh, when we did... were going to use the Cotton Club, and it wasn't in 46. I'm not sure. Wait. Wait a minute. So I e think it was. I think it was around after forty. Hey, hold on a second. Echo. <laughs> when did the Cotton Club open? Cotton Club on West One Hundred Twenty Fifth Street in New York is open from earlier today at six thirty p.m. No, 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 no. I don't want to know the present one that's sitting over there. Is uh, just has the name. Um, I, I'm pretty I, sure it was after forty six. Well, the Cotton I Club? The oh, no, the Cotton Club goes back to the 30s and maybe even 20s. Hold on a second. Let me look it up here. I'll look it up. Because I thought we were going to use the Cotton Club in our show, but we couldn't because it didn't relate to 46. Mm, wait a minute. Cotton I could be wrong. Club. Okay. Cotton Club. Um, and, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, so we ended up club using another club. Okay. What was the Harlem? Uh, it says, ah. Harlem's premier nightclub in the 20s and 30s. There you go. They know. Oh, okay, maybe it was before then. That's why we didn't use it. That's probably what. Club featured African-American entertainers of the era, including Count Basie, Ella Fitzgerald, Fats Waller, Louis Armstrong, Dizzy Gillespie, Nat Cole, Billy Holiday, Ethel Waters, and they don't even mention Duke Ellington. I mean, Duke Ellington yeah. was the house Or band. Alex Bennett. 
<laughs> you're really trying, you know, you, you really are. And I'm sorry, but the joke on you was very good. It had high quality. It had good. <laughs> it, it, it was had a lot of laughability. What well, Kevin yeah. said, I liked. It was funny. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so what are you reading there, Josh? Uh, not a whole lot. I'm just going over some stuff on my phone. I needed to get done. Yeah. Just messaging somebody some info they needed. Oh, really? Like from work? Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Seems it. like you're always on uh, yeah. call. Um, I, yeah, I have a lot I have to do for them. Uh -huh. uh, some of our, uh, uh, I help some of our other uh, sites now too. So a couple of them aren't, uh, performing very well and uh the area management uh came from our particular site and you know they trust what i do so i'm gonna i might have to start traveling a little bit here and there to help some other sites too i'm gonna go to illinois in a couple of weeks well how many uh, wait a minute how many different places do you have that make paint? our company mm -hmm. all over the country uh, right yeah Whoa, uh, oh yeah in the u.s um between real small customs type sites way up to big plants. I mean, God, I don't know. I mean, dozens and dozens, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. um, sites that are like ours. So really large sites, there's probably 15 to 20. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You know, and then you've probably got another. Gosh, oh, is there a reason why, is it the reason 15? why there are a lot of them? Why don't they just have one big one where they do all of it? Uh, cause it would have to be like, tremendously huge I don't think one site could ever do it um or or is it also all, they make, is it also because it's it's cheaper to um, do do it that way and and ship within the area rather than to have, have one central place and have to ship to the whole country not it's too much you don't want to do a lot of chemicals in one place yeah not too much it's mostly just because the business is so diverse and has so many different business units, mm -hmm. you know, such as industrial, you know, wood, general industrial, what they call mm -hmm. tag, which is the stores, you know, they have the Lowe's business unit only. They have, uh, they just have so many different business units that some of the, some of the sites are multifunctional like us and can do almost anything. And some of them are dedicated to only things like, you know, house paint, etc. In case so, people don't know, he works for a, a company that manufactures paint. Right. And, so, uh, yeah, it it just depends. Um, I mean, there are certain sites that, you know, only focus on certain business units, you know, like floor coverings. Uh, so the site's not that big. There might only be 50 or 60 people working there in total, you hmm. know, and then you got other sites that are five times that size you know like ours or whatever right, so, you have big vats of paint and stuff like that yeah we have we have everything you know uh my site's a uh, very it's a diverse site it does a lot of industrial let, let me ask product. you a question okay because all right uh, I'm, I, I, let me ask questions about paint here <clears throat> okay do they make one big vat of paint that has no color at all and then they start pouring color into these into the into this basic mixture or do they make that they make a color of paint with a, the a wholly complete in and of itself uh, we do we we do it all the way across the board so um it depends we, i mean our site makes everything from what we would call clears which is clear paint which is like a clear coat mm -hmm. you know all the way up to uh you know white white or gray primers mm -hmm. and then but we also make finished product paint for manufacturers so uh our site makes a lot of john deere green for example mm -hmm. you know it just goes to john deere in illinois and uh gets put on a tractor make yellow paint for caterpillar um, mm -hmm. which gets shipped all over the world and put on caterpillar paints uh, or i'm sorry yeah. equipment uh tractors and uh, are you the biggest but which can i ask you which paint company it is yeah that's fine yeah i work for uh, sw for sherwin williams so. sherwin williams is is it the biggest paint company or is, is there one that's bigger than um, sherwin williams it pretty much is but 
because of some of the other stuff that they do, PPG is, I think, maybe a little larger mm -hmm. in overall size, but they have some other, uh, they have some other parts of their business model too, you know, like they do still manufacture glass, for example, um, you know, which we do not. Uh, so it, it probably is just about the largest in the U.S. Because when I, when, I, when I was a kid, I only knew of two paint companies. One was Dutch Boy, which I liked because yeah, there was a cute little Dutch boy, okay? <laughs> and I was a little boy, so there was a Dutch boy, and that made me, that, and then the other one was Sherwin-Williams because I loved the yeah. logo in which it was like paint being dropped on the world, and it said, yeah. uh, what, we cover the world or something? That was a... Sure yeah, William's cover the earth. Is cover the, the earth. Logo yeah. Or whatever. yeah, yeah. I mean, Dutch Boy doesn't exist. Well, Dutch Boy still exists, but Dutch Boy is Sherwin Williams. Isn't it amazing? I know this much about paint. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, uh, Alan. You, doesn't, have, doesn't you, you have a paint PPG. question. We only have twenty-five yeah. people watching us right now. <laughs> it uh, is a paint nobody's watching tonight. Nobody God. watches this show anymore. So we may as well talk about paint. Go ahead. But, uh, doesn't PPG? only do industrial paint they don't do house paint like sherwin williams oh uh, no i think they still do they don't have nearly the retail presence that we do but they do a lot of automotive um, paint. Automotive. Yeah. yeah which uh I'm... but so do we i mean we have a site in yeah. kentucky that's dedicated to automotive so yeah. well, we make automotive but ours not very much my but. question is what is your biggest uh per, uh, biggest market for your paint is it is it private like me, uh, like me, or is it industrial? Industrial. I think it's ours is probably industrial. Um, I don't know if they make more from the what, like you said, what they would call the tag, which is retail mm -hmm. business model, or from industrial. It. it mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like 50, 50, 60, 40 or whatever. Uh, the industrial is very, very successful. Um, Sherwin Williams also makes powder coatings too. So what powder um, powder coatings? Powder coatings, yeah, which is like a powdered paint that goes on a lot of metals um, to give them a nice hard, uh, you know, like uh, finish that isn't really supposed to chip and you know things Electric. like that what? protects the metal for life from you know supposed to from like rust and things like that. Yeah, and uh, I would say the industrial is pretty large, like. Our plant makes a lot of industrial, almost, well, no, I shouldn't say almost everything, but a lot of what we make does not go to a store. It goes to another manufacturer mm -hmm. who then applies it to the product that you buy. Okay. I mean, we just, we make, I mean, you know, somebody took this phone case and made it and then painted it black, right? Yeah. You know, we make paint for people like that that take these types of but i, I thought that when you had a uh, paint this. well i thought when you had the, the a, a paint thing like that you know i mean a color on a case for instance that it was simply infused into the plastic that it was not painted onto the plastic some are some may be but some are not i mean i know that we make a lot of paint for people who make like atm facades you know, and, and cladding covers, whatever you want to call them, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and we make a lot of like in, in what they would call like industrial wood. Um, so, you know, people, you know, to build the banister that goes up your steps, right? They make it out of wood and everything. And then they stain it a certain color, paint it a certain color, then they clear coat it, right? So we sell them the paint and then the clear coat, you know? Mm -hmm. And it goes into their spray machines on their lines or whatever, and then they, you know, do whatever. But, yeah, we make a lot of industrial uh, at our site. I mean, I'm not really giving away any, like, trade secrets or anything that would get me in trouble there. I mean, our site is a pretty large industrial site. I mean, any tour that would come through, you know, even outside the company people, that's, you know, information they could yeah. get. So, I mean, they're... Uh, it's a pretty large industrial site. There are a couple more that are very similar to us, uh, you know, and those are some of the ones that I might start traveling to here and there to help out. But um, okay. the company I work for, pretty big business uh, model. 
was a huge worldwide company and we only used Sherwin Williams coatings on all our all our plants and the plants were huge and there are air plants that had yeah. a yeah. million gallons. Yeah, I mean, we have, they have large contracts. The I mean, being and everything all over the place and they only use Sherwood Wooden coatings. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and like I said, I, I, even something like this, I'm not giving away any secrets. I mean, because something like this would be public record, but uh, we yeah. make a lot of paint for the military. Yep. Well, I mean, we make see. a lot hey, of for Humvees, yeah. tanks, helicopters, yep. all that kind of stuff. Congratulations, we're down to 24 people. <laughs> well, I got a, I got a subject. Well, wait a minute. I got a subject for you. I got a subject for you. They came out with a list today, and I don't know who, how they come up with these lists and how they figure them out. Oh, I got a list too, and you're done. <laughs> it, it might be the same list. It could be. These are the cities that swear the most. That's the one. Is it Guess really? We were thinking alike. Guess yeah. who's on top? Well, New York. Uh, no, nope, nope, nope. You, New York? You'll wow. never, you'll never guess it, and I, I wouldn't it's, think it's so. Amazing. Yeah, go ahead. Columbus, yeah, Ohio. Not Chicago either. Yeah, Columbus, oh, Ohio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I live here. So. <laughs> Supposedly, the average person in Columbus swears or uses a curse word thirty-six times a day. A day. A <laughs> day. <laughs> The average person. Way above that. So, don't, don't would you, would you just say say a curse word, word right God. now, Josh? Just say one. I mean, there's no fucking way I don't talk uh, no, 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 but, more than that. No, I mean, but, I, but it's, it's, did you just say fucking? That's fucking bullshit. Yeah, I mean, no, oh, fucking, okay, all right, all right. Now we're up to thirty more than that. Okay. Fucking gabnet or whatever. <laughs> we're up to thirty-eight now. Uh, no, probably true. Number two, Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. You put money in the slot machine; it doesn't pay out. You go shit. Yeah, right. And then Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, they did your favorite state, Alex, Florida. But number five is for me. Well, That's Oklahoma kind of City difference. is number four. Also, number four is Dallas, Texas. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, also, Damn, also number four is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Billy's rough. Uh, because because they say do, they say fuck Doctor Oz a lot there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, also that. number four, Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana. Uh, okay. Number five, San Francisco, California. <laughs> Twenty four times a day. The field probably got half of that right there. He put yeah, them over the top. Yeah, yeah. Fort Worth, Texas is uh, number five. Tied for fifth is Louisville, Kentucky. Sixth is Washington, D.C. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun Joe Biden's going right out there. <laughs> number, <laughs> number seven is Los Angeles, California, and number seven is Austin, Texas. Oh, wow. The least swears a day. Phoenix, Arizona, followed by Portland, Oregon, Boston, Massachusetts, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, oh, that's Patrick. Patrick. San Jose, California, Back. That blew me away. Yeah, and now you, you're not going to believe this. Lee swears, okay, on the list. Lee swears. New York, well, si New, York New York, New York, New York City. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Average New Yorker swears 17 times a day, except Tony's block. Yeah. Yeah, my block. <laughs> or uh, his fucking block. Yeah. Right. My block goes right down the shitter. Detroit, Michigan, followed by Seattle, followed by Houston, Texas. You? Wow. Okay. That's right down near you there, uh, Charlie. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. San Diego, California. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. San Antonio, Texas. Nashville, Tennessee. And Denver, Colorado. Those are the most swearing cities in the United States. The least. I would love to know how they did this survey. How yeah. do you come up with that? Who who has the time to yeah, do, do that? Do right. What do you call yeah. people up on the phone and try to like bait them into curse? No, but I just know. I bet they but they're coming out with numbers here. Yeah. You know. They, they, uh, what if they just make phony phone calls and see how many times people cuss them out? I don't know. I don't know how go. you would how you would even come up with this or why you would Stand even wake up and, and what time what time of day do you wake up and say you know what I think it'd be fun to find out. 
<laughs> How many fucking people were? You know, give the job to Harry J. Anslinger. He always likes to get a good job. Yeah. But anyway, no, I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing. The stats probably came from Herschel Walker's campaign. Yeah. What I think is, what I think, I'll tell you what I think is even more amazing is that Kevin and I came up with exactly the same list at the yeah. same time. We, we were thinking, I was thinking, I kept meaning to bring it up, and I think we were channeling each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, 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 yeah. Uh, the report found typical American swears 21 times a day, but, over, uh, but half the respondents will use substitution for swear words such as fudge, heck, and holy cow. How many? Holy how cow. many here substitute f uh, fudge for a word? No. no. Frickin'. Huh? Frickin'. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when they, when somebody's gonna say "son of a bitch," I usually say "son of a biscuit eater." Dad, blast the gosh darn blankety heck! Wh what was that? <laughs> Dad, blast the da gosh darn blankety heck! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I never heard of that one before. Yeah, neither have I. Yeah, it's um, an Austin thing. It's let me see, let me see Southern, if, our, if uh, let me see if our, one is that dumbest. Let me see if our uh, numbers got any better uh, during that. <laughs> no, it went up back to twenty five. So uh, we're 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 really cool. The other we're night we were up to it. almost fifty. Yeah. Yeah, and tonight it's like, yeah. Is there something going on I don't know about out there? Bill's not on the show. Baseball playoffs, I guess. Yeah, playoffs. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. playoffs. That's right. I was talking. Man, to, I was talking to Jack Bishop today because he called me, and um, he brought up the radio station in San Francisco that's being changed after 31 years. You know, the I think getting rid of the call letters, KGO in San Francisco. Okay. And then he starts to talk about radio, radio, radio. And I, the last thing I'd like to talk about is radio. I just find it a boring subject, okay? But he, he was mentioning it, and he said, well, he says, you know, it's just that they don't get back to basics and blah, 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 blah. And I just <laughs> said, you know why these stations are doing these sort of things? It's they're, 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 they're playing a defensive game now. The idea is let's not be the ones that lose all the money on this radio station you know what happened was a few years ago this was god i'm trying to remember when the deregulation happened but they deregulated radio enough so that where before you could only own like five radio stations five am five fm mm -hmm. and five yep. tv and that was it all of a sudden they took that cap off of there and people like clear channel which later became uh, iheart radio bought up 1200 radio stations yeah i remember that, that okay when they took that off now you, you, you know in so. the old days if you were if you were a radio uh, the guy who wanted to buy a radio station you had to prove to the fcc you had the financial wherewithal <laughs> to own right. one and to keep it going for a year without it making money all right but now yeah, that didn't even good. count of, and so people were just you know buying these things left and right and they're they weren't even paying cash for the, it. Was all, it was horrible. It was just horrible. And that's right. what happened to the business. And people... Deregulation. Huh? Deregulation. It was like deregulation. By the way, you know who made that possible? Clinton. Who did that? Clinton. That's right. Bill Clinton. Yeah, I remember when it happened. He didn't... It because wasn't that he wanted to deregulate radio. It was that he wanted to do something, and I can't remember what it was exactly, to, to pass a law to do something else, but it, it by by you know sometimes when you pass yeah. a law, this thing like this like deregulation is affected, and uh, it just it just turned the business into uh, you know what can right. we do to make money? What can we do to make money? And it was it was pretty terrible, you know. So uh, it, who knows? Uh, uh, and and so consequently, something like this happens. And, you know, Jack says to me, oh, yeah, you know, they just didn't try hard enough, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, hey, radio doesn't exist anymore, you know. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's an, old, an old deal now. And uh, old it, media. It, it's old media. Yeah, and that's everybody started going automated, too. Well, they, they did Slowly. that, but they didn't give people a reason to listen, you know. Right. 
And when when you go to can go to the internet and listen to what you want to listen to, you know, yes, uh, Tony. Yep. But you know what's funny? You say it's an old deal. I actually, what you call it, hooked up my old stereo in the process of it. And I actually today got an old AM antenna. I got to the mail and I actually been buying new records. So actually, I'm actually enjoying going back. I still pick up regular stuff. I want to, you know, you can still get local stations. But Alex, last week I was listening to ABC. Your friend was on the, uh, the what you call the guy you interviewed for an hour. What's his name? I forgot his name again. He was on like two weeks. Oh, you ago. mean the former governor? Yes, the, he was the former governor. Was on for like. Uh, a half hour, 45 minutes at the WABC radio at night. Yeah, I think he does a show. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was good. I mean, I, I, I used to listen to regular radio. Like, I Well, you're like, the last person. I know. I enjoy you know, it. I mean, people have, you know, I don't think it's been replaced by anything better. Mind you, I think that, and maybe call me old-fashioned, but there was a value to local radio when it was local. The problem yeah. was with all this deregulation, local radio disappeared. Everything was like you had, you had... If you had 1,200 stations, 600 of them got the same show. You were piping in from L from L A or New York. The only thing that's really close to that now anymore is is sports talk radio. Oh, I listen to KNBR on the on the radio. Yeah, yeah, but even yeah, it doesn't. Sports talk it, radio is local, yeah. and it's usually most. There's a few local sports talk radio stations. Mm -hmm. But it but does it. But it does, But by necessity, does it need to be local? No. No, it doesn't. But there's a lot of. You know, national sports talk radio shows now too. The, the, the local sports talk radio shows are going away. I mean, the rate radio with the way it is. Um, if in New York City, nine eleven happened again, New Yorkers wouldn't know about it unless they turned on their TV set, right? Because the radio stations wouldn't know it, wouldn't be able to right. do anything about it because all the shows are being piped in from somewhere else, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And the only thing we have here back in the Bay Area now is. KCBS, really. Yeah, well, I mean, local radio was very important as, as a right. center for, for the community, and I think That's it served a function. It, it put people, gave people jobs at those radio stations and so on. Now yeah, it's... And you got, you got, you know, emergency information from them, too. Well, they say that this sport, all this sports, by the way, it's going to sports, but it's not going to normal sports. It's sports betting That's big. is That's the big. format. Yeah. yeah, there's a big thing going on here about sports betting out here in California. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to pass a law there, right? That you, yeah. that, that fan duel and people like that. Not connect. that it doesn't happen here. Yeah, I don't understand that. You have fan duel out there yet? Oh yeah. Yeah, we've had it for years, and, and all of a sudden they're going, "Oh, now you can do it." I'm going, what the "Fuck, it's been going on for years." I think it's horrible. I think it's terrible. Take it out. Of I think that that. Gambling has perhaps ruined more lives. Well, when they started to let, you know, the, 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 the Vegas, the teams into Vegas, that's when it all started going downhill. Yeah. Well, Raider, I mean, not necessarily the Raiders. But, but don't you, I don't you agree, started, Kevin, started, with me? Started that, hockey. Hockey was yeah. the first team in Vegas. You shouldn't have any teams in Vegas at all. Huh? You should have no teams no, in but, Vegas. But don't, don't, you, don't, you, don't you agree with let, me about betting? The betting is has ruined more families. You know, the, the husband going Probably, out and yeah. dropping the every dime they own. You know, I mean, it's terrible. It's horrible, and I think they the let, fact that they, they can have it. They let hockey into uh, into Vegas first, and then, of course, the Raiders followed, and now I'm sure basketball is going to go they want in. A basketball. LeBron wants a They want a team. I told you, there was an old. You guys, you know, Kevin. You know, you and Billy running rebels. The college yeah. team, their coach. Yeah. I mean, he had ties. I mean, this is this is legitimate. They said he had ties to gamblers. They were thinking that some of those games well, might have. Sure. Well, well, no, but you see, here's here's, here's the silly, here's home. the horrible part about it. Do you remember? There was a time when gambling could not be involved in sports. You could not be a player and go yeah, out and bet. The game. They went, I watched exactly. the game. They got you know. And now, and now, now, now you turn on these sports stations, you turn on a game like the Yankees, and half the ads or three-quarters yeah. of the ads and they got are, are all for about fantasy. Everything all, else. Yeah. All for and there you got Pete Rose 
Pete Rose sitting there, and they won't touch yeah. him. We yeah. won't let him in the Hall of Fame, but we'll we'll run ads and everybody throw the money. Well, in. That, but it's all changed. Bullshit. There was a time when they they would just say, "You want to run ads for betting program? No, you can't do that in in sports." I mean, if I were the NFL, I would say, "We cannot accept ads for betting organizations." <laughs> Shit, they got an official sponsor. I, exactly, yeah, but they, they should. They have official. Yeah. It's a huge you know what the sponsor. problem is, though? My opinion on this: yeah. if Pete Rozelle was alive, he never would have had this happen. The new NFL commissioner, he will sell this league out for the buck. It's never enough money now, and yeah. the owners don't care. They want every dollar, every yeah. fucking dollar. Yeah. Well, yeah. Alex Joe Namath had to sell his stake in back in the nightclub in the city because he was sitting there having drinks with gamblers. Rozelle said, "You can't do that." Getting into your face. Yeah, yeah. And now, 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 gamblers. Now it's like, yeah, everybody have a party. If we vetted who these guys are that own these betting apps, mm -hmm. you know, how do, how do we know they're not? How, 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 how do we know that? How do we know they're not even mob? <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if they were getting a cut of it. You know. Okay. I was never a Pete Rose fan, but they should just let him go into the Hall of Fame at this point. He had it. Hey, over four thousand hits, man. Yeah, it's like a, it's a disease. They don't, you know what? It's uh, he has an illness. That's what that is. Yeah, and but and it was never proven. I think that he ever threw a game. No, that no, was close the deal he struck with. Yeah, uh, it was with really never ball. even accused of that. I mean, yeah, no, no. Yeah. he <laughs> never uh, stopped performance on the field. He just, you know, placed well, wagers. Well, you know, I think it's terrible that they that they did what they did to Pete Rose simply because, okay, let's say he does something illegal, does something that's not right. Let's say he beats his wife. Let's say he does something horrible. He still yeah. is a baseball great no matter what. He still got yeah. Barry Bonds shooting roids and something else. What? Yeah. What were you saying about he Barry Bonds shooting roids and he got awards and he got put in the hall of fame and all yeah, he's got the home yeah. record in the home and the record book yes yes it, with Order an asterisk with an asterisk oh that's yeah, what horrible the hell's all that about boy what a punishment an asterisk yeah, yeah. Sure. they like when he was doing roids in 98 because he was saving the season well that's bud Selig. we need they came off a show well what i said about the use of, what i said about the use of steroids is I don't know. See, I'm not a sports guy, so I just don't know what's wrong with it. Doesn't it make for a better game? I think it makes it feel better. <laughs> you know? I mean, come on. Guy's going to run faster. He's going to hit harder. Well, that's and, nice. and the only people, that, the only thing that matters to the fan is how good a game they get. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But the reason they don't like him on steroids is because that tips the balance when it comes to the betting. Well, mm -hmm. And it's all yeah. all these shows, all these football games, all these baseball games on television are no there loss. because they're good for gambling. Well, it's true, Alex. Think about it like this. Friday night comes. Why do we need to know the injury reports in the Daily News? Yeah. You know, we found a topic that made the numbers go up. You ready for that? Yeah, there you go. And now it's now it's too late because you know I got to make way for Jack. You know, so. it's Alex a sports show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Bennett Sports Talk. Yeah, I just, I just, you know, we should, we should get back to this some night because it's a good topic. That is really good. Topic. I love talking about the gambling side of it. Yeah, yeah, because it, 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 the reason we make such a big deal about sports right now is the gambling aspect of it. And um, you know, and now, now it's just. It's going off the walls, you know. Mm -hmm. You can bet your whole family's income in one night on FanDuel. Good for you, you know. You can do it on your phone. Yeah, you can do picks. it on your phone. Tony's picks. I love yeah. my picks. Tony's yeah. picks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Anyway, hey, listen, this has uh, been nice. Uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, uh, Jeff, for being here. Thank you, You're Kevin. Right. Always enjoy your presence, and you look so relaxed. I feel like I have to go to sleep right now. <laughs> you know. I feel like Shecky. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 yes, and uh, Josh, uh, great talking to you again. Always good having you here and mm -hmm. seeing you in that big comfy chair with sports. Oh, you're better, huh? Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, Charlie, thank you. Thank you, uh, Alan. And uh, thank you very much to Tony for having joined us tonight. Everybody, 
give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just uh, do a few little cleanup things here and get rid of them. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the intersection that's following this program right here. I'll see you on Monday. Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday at 4 o'clock for the pop-up show. And then right back here again, 10.30 uh, Eastern Time on Wednesday uh, for this the ramble. Okay? Till then. Uh, you know, uh, I'll see you then. Same time, same station in life, as I always like to say. And by the way, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>